to work. Am I on? I think I'm on now. All right. So listen, y'all. I know. <laughs> I know I'm not in my lovely apartment. That's too expensive and really not worth that much. But where my lovely studio of art stuff is, I don't have it right now because I had to come over to the Kissimmee Center or the Center Center Kissimmee. Sorry. Um, because we had technical difficulties, as I've been having all day. Luckily, I'm in Kissimmee, and you know, it's my hometown, so I can just drive right over. So, anywho's, um, usually, of course, it's the art and talk show, but I'm just gonna be here talking along with with Tom because I don't have my art and stuff with me. Oh yeah, okay, so. Um, I'm just gonna give the mic over to Miss Tommy and she's gonna kinda introduce herself and yeah. Well okay. hi, <laughs> I'm Tommy Pritchett. I am the Kissimmee Program Manager here at the Center Kissimmee. Um, I also am the Director of Development for the LGBT Center um, here in Central Florida. Um, if you are not familiar with the Center Kissimmee, we're a satellite office of the LGBT Center Orlando. So we're the same organization, um, but in 2018, we decided to open a location in Osceola County. Um, so I actually started a week before the center down here opened. So I was here for the opening. And um, last July, I uh, became the program manager down here. Mm. So I've been down here ever since. Nice, nice. So, so, so is the, uh, what does the, the center have to, to offer as a whole, like as in a total package? Like what do people expect when they come in here? Or should they expect? Sure, so um, most people find us because they're looking for free HIV testing. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of our main services. Uh, we provide free confidential HIV and hepatitis C testing. Mm -hmm. um, right now, Monday through Thursday, um, but in July, we may be offering it on Fridays as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really exciting. Uh, aside from that, we also partner with Zebra Coalition here in our Simi Center, mm -hmm. um, and they provide mental health services for LGBTQ youth. Um, and so they provide full-time counseling right here in our office. Nice. So anyone um, between the ages of 14 and 24 are eligible for those services. Nice. Um, Is it free? It's free. Nice. Oh, it's that's free. A key word. And it's unlimited, so um, they they can come and have multiple counseling sessions. It's right. not limited to one session. Right, right, right. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, we also have services for seniors. Mm -hmm. So we have what's called our OWLs. Mm -hmm. It's our older, wiser learners. Mm -hmm. And um, they meet here on Wednesday mornings. They have coffee, uh, they socialize, play games. Um, and uh, this becomes a space for them to get out of their homes, yeah. socialize with people in their age group or with similar interests, mm -hmm. and um, really provide a safe space for our LGBT seniors. That's awesome. Um, other than that, we also have free condoms. Mm -hmm. we, um, we have Narcan distribution here. So um, if you know somebody who um, it has an addiction to drugs mm -hmm. or has um, a likelihood of overdose you can come and check out um, Narcan no questions mm. asked um, every box has two doses mm. uh, so it's always good to have in your back pocket especially if you deal with folks um, if you're a first responder or something of that nature you should probably already have access to Narcan but if not we have it for you here nice awesome thank you for that sure. um, so what what you know what are the main issues that you see kind of most coming in that that maybe the society doesn't know that's going on with the LGBT community? Like, what do you see mostly coming in? Like, what's a common trend of uh, youth as well as adults coming into the center? What are they kind of looking for and searching for? Well, I think a lot of people um, forget that HIV is still a really huge problem, mm -hmm. um, especially right here in Central Florida. They're not aware that um, Florida ranks number one in the country for um, new HIV cases. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. <clears throat> and Central Florida is, I think, number two in the state. Mm -hmm. um, I might have those numbers wrong. That might be an old um, stat. stat, but it's we're high up there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a huge issue. Um, and I think, too, sometimes 
forget that, uh, you know, just because PrEP is available, which is a prevention for HIV, mm -hmm. um, people don't wear condoms and so they're contracting other STIs. Mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing a rise in other STIs uh, as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So um, just, you know, being knowledgeable about having safe sex, um, being able to put yourself first, you know, make right. sure that you're maintaining your own health uh, is very important. Um, so we do a lot of education. Um, I think people consider us just a testing center sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but we love to get out in the community and talk to people about the services that we offer, um, you know, spread awareness about safe sex practices. Mm -hmm. We have thousands of condoms that we can give away um, for free. So, you know, condoms can be expensive. So if you can get them somewhere for free, right, right, why right. not? You have no excuse. <laughs> right, right. Um, you should always be using protection. For sure. um, and you know what? Uh, testing takes 15 minutes. So a lot of people, I think, think that it's a big deal. It's a huge process. It's really not. Um, you come in, uh, you answer some questions. It's a finger stick. So it's just a little drop of blood. Um, takes just 10 or 15 minutes for those results to come back. And, um, you know, there's really no reason not to get tested. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. So what, um, as you know, like there's a lot of, going on in the world society wise and all the protests going on and stuff like that how how is um i guess how can the society make things easier or better for the lgbtq community because you know us of course as, as me as a black person black man what's going on is is very racism been going on and that and that consists of a lot of hate crime that happens so like mm -hmm. when it comes to, I know that the LGBT community also has hate crime as well. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is it that, you know, we as a society can do to kind of break that, that, I don't know, stigma that's on, you know, the LGBT community of, cause they, they don't get treated. They, I, me personally, I don't really hear it much in the news about the hate crime against LGBT community or whatever. I mean, it's out there, but I don't hear it as much as like you know, um, racism and stuff like that. Sure, unfortunately, um, the LGBT community kind of gets um, lost in mm -hmm. situations like that, especially um, transgressions against trans women, mm -hmm. um, especially trans women of color. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, they're misgendered in the news. Um, mm -hmm you know, or they're called a transvestite or something else. Right. Um, they are often called by their dead name, which is the name they were before they transitioned. Um, and, you know, that is a really big problem. We need to honor people for who they are and not who we perceive them to be. Um, that's really important, right. even if a life has passed on, um, to honor people for who they are. Um, and yeah, discrimination is huge in our community. Um, we've been really fortunate here in Kissimmee that we haven't had um, any instances of vandalism or violence or anything. Um, but our center in Orlando gets um, graffiti all the time. Um, very recently, um, we had uh, the Pulse mural on the side of our building mm -hmm. was vandalized um, by a white supremacy group. Um, they put paraphernalia all over the building. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it still happens. Um, it might not be publicized as much, um, but, you know, just like the black community um, and other communities of color and marginalized communities, we're still writing, we're still fighting for um, equality right. and equity in our community as well. Right. Um, and right now is Pride Month, June. Um, and we're coming up on the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people forget that the Stonewall Riots um, were started by police brutality against um, people of color mm -hmm. who were transgender or drag performers or gay. Yeah. And, um, you know, so the LGBT community has deep roots in fighting for equality alongside the black community. Right, right, right. And yeah, I think I it's really that. important yeah. that, um, you know, we don't forget that and we work together. For sure, yeah. No, That's yeah. the only way we're gonna get there, right? Is right. if we work together. Right, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm very big on bridging that gap between, 
I think there's like, you know, there's always an age gap, there's a gender gap, there's a race gap, like all those gaps. And once, mm-hmm. until all those gaps are closed in a community, it'll, it'll always be division, like no matter what. So I always believe in like coming together, find, find a middle ground, even if we don't agree with uh, people's religion or sexual identity and et cetera, it's still a respect thing. Like it's still a, right. like, you can still should be able to coexist within the world or within a restaurant or within or whatever. So um, I'm big on that, but uh, I did have a follow up question. Um, the, the, how do we, well, I was talking about bridging the gap. So like for me being like, you know, a heterosexual man, straight man, and how, and I wouldn't know how a homosexual man or a gay person or anyone a part of in the LGBT community feels emotionally. Mm-hmm. So like how, <laughs> just just as, you know, certain people want to be, feel respected for who they are and how they identify, how, how is it that, how do we get to build those like conversations with the community that kind of sometimes they got this stereotype that we don't either want to talk to them because they've been disrespected throughout their lifetime or whatever the case may be, kind of like, I would say prejudice, mm-hmm. per se. How do we kind of break that gap? Or what's the, I don't know, what's the initiative to kind of break that gap between the LGBT community and everyone that's on a social norm against the community? Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> I think the key word is having those conversations. Um, I think that when everybody sits at the table, we have to put aside our own prejudices, our own um, unconscious biases, and we have to be active listeners. So that means I honor you for who you are as a black heterosexual male. Mm-hmm. Um, because I can't identify with you. Right. I'm a white woman. Right, I'm right. a cis woman. So mm-hmm. I was born as a woman and I feel like a woman and I present as a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I can't imagine how you feel right. and you can't imagine how I feel. Correct. So the only way that we can bridge gaps is by communicating with each other and honoring people for who they are mm-hmm. and saying, you know what, you're right. I can't understand what that's like. But, um, you know, I want to support you and how can I support you better? And just being open to um, tackling really difficult conversations and doing it honestly and with an open heart. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard. It's really hard. And we're seeing a lot of that happen right now with um, with the Black Lives Matter movement Mm -hmm. and um, the call to action um, for law enforcement agencies. You know, there needs to be systemic change. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this not as a representative of the center, but as Tommy, um, you know, there needs to be systemic change um, so that we're not targeting people unfairly. Um, You know, the police are not social workers. The police are not mental health counselors. And oftentimes they're put in these situations with people that they're not equipped to handle because they have been militarized. And um, society is not militarized, you know? Um, So we can't, we can't tackle situations um, with violence as the only answer. Correct, correct. You know, and it's the same thing with um, LGBT issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't just forget that um, trans people exist right. and that, um, you know, their identities are important. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who they were before because that person is dead to them. Mm-hmm. You know, a transgender person is living as their new person their new self um and that needs to be honored and respected and so we have to we have to dig deep and we have to let go of things that have been holding us back for centuries Mm -hmm. yeah i agree um uh, about the you know when you you said something i forgot the exact word but it brought up a situation that my one of my friends were going through when i went to clark Atlanta university um he was telling me about his friend that basically when a police officer shows up to a house, a domestic co- uh, violence call of two men, uh, you know, homosexual men, they they don't consider it domestic violence because it's two men. 
or mm-hmm. they, because you know they don't mm-hmm. they just say oh well it's two men <laughs> fighting it's not you know uh, a woman and a, and a man so they don't consider it domestic violence or, or they don't put it under that that whatever statute of limitations would be how how does and like you said you know police officers aren't social workers or aren't psychologists so they can't really know whether they not, they're not trained in that to kind of identify or whatever this would be so how is there is there like an initiative from the lgbt community to kind of stop that um because he said when he was telling me in Atlanta, like it's it's an often common thing that the the man who is the and i'm horrible with names and stuff like that, but the man who is the the woman the woman in the relationship mm-hmm is the one you know who's getting beaten on or the case may be and but he gets no he gets no justice if it was a domestic violence call or they take the court and it just gets washed away mm-hmm. so how do you how is there is there an initiative from the lgbt community that is kind of working towards that some type of i don't know mm-hmm. yeah. so um in orange county there is a coalition called the gay um the gay officers action league Um, and that is, uh, essentially one of the things that, um, that they work toward is training officers to be able to, um, assist in LGBT specific issues. Um, you know, um, domestic violence, for instance, um, just like you said, happens very commonly in the lesbian community too. Who's the man in the relationship? Right. Who who wears the pants? If right. one is a little bit more masculine, then obviously they're the aggressor, right? right, right. Um, just like women can't, you know, be the aggressor right. in a domestic in violence a, uh, right. in situation a, either. Mm-hmm. So um, there there is an initiative, um, and there are officers um, that go around the country and do sensitivity training, okay. um, and That's so right. we're seeing a lot more of these um of these coalitions started yeah, in yeah. different institutions specifically to um to educate people to okay. know how to um relate to situations and we're not any different than anybody else we Human. still have the same issues Human domestic being. violence is huge in the lgbt community yeah. but it's not talked about right, right, right you yeah. know and it's hard to find resources right, right, right. Yeah. I, I think that's i think that's a lot of when it comes to like the LGBT community, minority community, there's always a lack of uh, research or lack of whatever it may be. And that's also because I think a part of uh, we're not in those upper high leadership roles to actually kind of speak out about it. Because the, the people who do have the, the clout or the you know the fame, they don't really come out and speak about it because mm-hmm. uh, they lack the courage or they, you know, they may lose sponsorships or whatever it could be, you know. So mm-hmm. I think it just it, we need more people who have courage to go out there and speak about their their race for their community or their race or their, you know, whatever it could be. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, what I have one more question. And I'm drawing a blank. I don't know. Okay, so um, what what how can how can the people of you know Kissimmee of Osceola County or just Central Florida just anyone watching um how can they support the Kissimmee Center and you know the goal like how can they support whether it's uh, financially or whether it's items or like how how are they able to help out sure we're um well we always need money (laughs) we're a nonprofit organization so um we are um, largely funded by grants and donations from individuals and businesses Mm -hmm. so um, donating um, financially is always uh, our number one ask Mm -hmm. Um, but we also um, can use uh, volunteers we can always use manpower Um, if not here at the semi our orlando location also is um, highly volunteer Mm -hmm. so um, you know, having people who are um, willing to either be advocates for the LGBT community or are from the LGBT community. Um, we love to have new faces in here all the time. Um, and we also have a, uh, a little mini food pantry for the Osceola Council on Aging. So if you're cleaning out your pantries and you have stuff that's unexpired and is non-perishable food items, 
feel free to bring them by and drop them off for us because um, we do once we get a box full we take it over there and um, it's just our way to help support the community in other ways as well I see around aging is awesome I always do meals on wheels with them and um, it's always you know those elderly people you got to know that some of them really don't have uh, family members around anymore to help out. So Osceola Law and Aging really is one of those organizations that do a lot of meals, whether it's items, um, like you're saying, food, and stuff like that, that they are, I support them. <laughs> so now I'm doing the best support. Um, is there any social media that you want to give for them to follow or um, go to the website for the Kissimmee Center or the Orlando Center? Sure. So the Center City has a TikTok page, has an Instagram page, and a Facebook page. Um, they're all LGBT Kissimmee, uh, LGBT Center Kissimmee. Um, so find us on there. Um, if you go to our website, which is www.thecenterorlando.org, there's a Kissimmee tab. Um, and very soon, I will have a really exciting announcement, but I can't spill the beans spill it quite yet. yet. Okay. Um, so okay. keep an eye on our Facebook page for Tune. an announcement in the next week or two. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, thank you all for coming. I usually We usually would take the time for the questions, but I have like nine paintings due before Father's Day, so I can't really hang out much, but we will virtually comment to all the questions because I see there's a, there's a bunch going on right now from afar but we'll virtually comment to any questions that you ask for Tommy she'll respond because she is tagged in there so she'll get the notifications as well and I will respond to any questions that I possibly can if not I'll dish it off to her so <laughs> anywho I love all of y'all I appreciate y'all for this is episode three of the art and talk show no art was done but <laughs> <laughs> just know that tomorrow I have I have three show two shows tomorrow and hopefully they can come on um yeah <laughs> so anyways love y'all I'll see y'all tomorrow <laughs> all right so